Hi, I'm Stacy Q. I'm from Orange County. My father was a, a fireman, the Anaheim Fire Department. And my mother was a preschool teacher. And um, all I wanted to do from age, I think, two and a half was to be a ballerina. I have one brother and one sister. Um, my sister's about nine years older than me, and my brother is uh, two years older. My father <clears throat> um, passed away in 2000, the year 2000, of cancer. Um, I miss him all the time. It was just his birthday two days ago. You want to hear something funny? It dawned on me that my mother's maiden name is Tibet. Her maiden name is Tibet. Joyce. Pauline Joyce Tibbet. Tibet. Religion, religion's not, it's not something that has to be scary. And religion, I mean really just the word to do something religiously only means to do it over and over and over and over again. I mean, I met, I met t the Tibetans and I, I met Tibetan um, Vajrayana Buddhist practitioner of like maybe 15 years ago. It's not being Buddhist and it's not Buddhism. It sounds like it, like, like Christianity or Judaism, but um, that's not what he would have called it, just as I'm pretty sure Christ would not have, Christ would not have made such a big deal about himself. But I always, always, always knew, knew Jesus and um, yeah, pure is pure and holy is holy. I don't care what you call it or from where it came. E even just the term Buddhist, it's just, uh, I think, a title. Um, Buddhist Shakyamuni himself did not, did not call it B Buddhism. That's just what we now, after the fact, call it. It's not special for Buddhists, and it's not, not particular to Buddhism. It's how things are. People need to, they need, you need to look in yourself, in yourself, what, what goes and what doesn't, what works and what doesn't. Yeah, I still cannot say that I'm happy, but you know, things are how they are. And what my Tibetan friends assure me is that it's not special for, for Buddhists or Tibetans. Tibetan Vajrayana Buddhism is not for Tibetan Vajrayana Buddhists. It's for everybody. Come here. Come, Chidi. Tell me you're beautiful. Yes. Animals are just so intuitive. It's totally sensitive. Animals are like that. It's very sweet. They will make you feel much better. He makes me feel better. <laughs> Every individual, anything is unique. That's the thing. Nobody's exactly like somebody else, you know? Everybody, individual. And um, the kind of individual that you are in this lifetime, how you recognize yourself and how others view you, has everything to do with your, what you in your mind what you think so you know people are saying well visualize heaven or visualize this and then they ask how do I do that it's up to you oh I got your butt I got that tush you are very good looking it's a beautiful boy T Tibetan Tibetan um, Buddhist scriptures um, not to say that animals are ignorant but, but are stupid, but the, the animal realm is the realm of stupidity, um, ignorance. The human realm is the realm of desire. The, um, the hell realm is, 
ha hate, anger. Uh, the hungry ghost realm is um, that of, of um, en envy. And the demigod realm is the realm of um, jealousy. And the god realm is the realm of um, pride. So there you have it, the six realms in the um, Tibetan Buddhist cycle. The thing about the hu human realm is that you have that, that thinking, that mind, that aware and the awareness of your own mind. Animals don't have that. They cannot, they don't reason like, you know, those are qualities that are unique to the human realm. Hell realms, the human realm, the hungry ghost realms, uh, the, the demigod realms, um, the animal realms, and the god realms. D and don't wait, you know, until you're going to pass away to think that hell and heaven, all those things are something that happens afterwards. I just, it's not so. I don't, I don't find. I think that, why wait? You lo look now around you, you know? And mostly, watch your own mind. Um, Tibetan words, English words, is very difficult. Tibetan society alone up there, isolated in the Himalayas, just so, so advanced, not touched by society. But the, the, the crux of, of this Kadin Chenma is um, a Lama of great kindness, and may we meet again and again. May we meet again and again. of the Drikun Kagyu lineage. There are four lineages in Tibet, the Sakya, and the Kagyu, and the Nyingma, and the, um, the uh, Gelu, which is Dalai Lama is Gelu, which is predominantly very strong um, monk energy. Um, His Holiness Dilo Tensei Rinpoche was still alive in 1990. And so I left Atlantic Records and I went to Nepal to meet him, and um, it was not a mistake. Holy's holy. I mean, if you go in the cave, they put your body, that your, your consciousness is already gone, you know, a dead body, in a place. We call it rainbow body. And then somebody goes that place three days later, and your body's not there. That is some kind of practitioner who can, who body, goes rainbow body and goes up. You can't even find the body anymore. That's an extremely accomplished practitioner, if you ask me. So I, um, 
uh, all I can say, I can, it's only my experience of, of Jesus is that, um, you know, Mary went back and she said, she didn't go, she didn't freak out and go, oh my God, who took the body? She just went, oh my God, it's gone. That's rainbow body. And we call, yeah, Jesus, I have to say, is bodhisattva. Rainbow body means um, you don't leave, you don't, you don't leaving a body behind. When you, when you, when you go, you, when you transfer consciousness, means you, um, you're so pure that nothing's left. And, and all kinds of miracles um, they talk about in all parts of the world, where the body um, shrinks down to like this size and people see it and it's like, oh my God, all kinds of miracles like that. Well, that is, I I if, it, if it is so, I, then that is in my, in my opinion, in my experience, no matter what anybody said, the scholars over here or the this over there, that's that's real. That's really something to me because I know something about these pra practices. A higher consciousness doesn't seem like something d different. It's a good thing to aspire to. I aspire to that. Um, maybe it's just my good fortune. I any individual, I would urge them to look turn their eyes in a way inward and you know, people a higher consciousness is a, you know this or this I don't think so I think you will find it I, I I'm pretty sure somewhere in there everybody has it so don't looking to the higher look higher <laughs> yeah it's very difficult to um, to try to a attain, you know, better or the betterest, the best, without some guidance, you know, and I'm, I'm fairly sure that that's not what they teach you at university. Not to knock university, but I, that is why I, I as a teenager out of, out of school, did not gravitate towards education. It seemed like, um, it seemed like I would be getting farther from what I really needed. What's important is to try not to hurt a anyone else. Try. And um, I know my, in my practice it, it might look like or seem like there are a lot of commitments attached to it, but I have very kind teachers and they, the main crux of it is to have to, to really experience real loving kindness, truly. And there, that will surely, no doubt, I assure you, lead to a ultimate peace, which is no, no worries. You'll have no worry, and you can just be happy all the time, no matter what. If you have that content peace, it will not matter. And mostly, watch your own mind. Watch your own mind and train it. If something I felt negative happened to me and I spent the rest of my life blaming it on somebody else, I'm much more comfortable owning what happens to me, taking, knowing that that's all mine, nobody else's. Try not to hurt e each other. Nobody wants to suffer. Nobody wants to be in war. Nobody wants to feel hurt. You hope, hope all the wonderful things you want for yourself or you, for your loved ones, if you can just make your mind a little bigger and want that for everybody else. Slowly, slowly, things will get better for everybody. Things will get better for everybody.